And welcome, Hoosier fans, to the inaugural edition of the Inside Scoop with Tamar Bates, presented by our friends at Speakeasy Sales Copy, who help you drive more leads, sales, and loyalty to your business through the written word. I'm your host, Jared Morris, very excited to be hosting a first-of-its-kind show in the history of Indiana basketball, a recurring podcast interview series during the season with a current IU player, and not just any player. I think by this point, with a Bahamas trip in the rear view and Hoosier hysteria mere days away, the star of the show really needs no introduction, but let's run through a few of the highlights anyway. He was a two-time All-State selection at Piper High School in Kansas City, Kansas, where he joined forces with his brother to win a state title. He then played his senior year at IMG Academy on a star-studded roster and was a double-figure scorer. And get this, IU fans, he shot 40% from three as a senior and 44.1% from three as a junior, and that's not even the best part of his offensive game. He became one of the highest-rising recruits in the country, going from the 117th-ranked prospect in September of 2019 to ending up as a five-star consensus top 30 recruit by the time he signed with IU. And now... Well, none of that really matters much anymore because he's just another light-in-the-butt freshman who the rest of the Big Ten will be trying to put in his place. And we'll be here all season long following along and giving you the inside scoop. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Tamar Scoop Bates. How you doing, Tamar? Good. How are you? I appreciate that introduction. (laughs) I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. I'm excited about this. So let's uh, let's get the most important question out of the way first. How do you want to be addressed on this show? Are you Tamar or are you Scoop? I mean, you you could pick your poison. I mean, I I answer to both. I hear both every day. So, you know, it really don't matter. Just whatever your preference is. Okay. All right. We can do that. We can do that. So let's uh, let's begin by giving folks a quick overview of what they can expect with this series. It's going to be 20 episodes. We'll start with this one, and it's going to last all the way through your guys' final four run in April. I'm just projecting, just guessing what's yeah. going to happen. Uh, and we're not going to promise anything yet kind of from a publishing schedule. Like, it's not going to be every other Tuesday or anything like that just because we kind of have to be flexible once the season starts. You're a college basketball player. I have a seventh month old, seven month old at home. So we may have to scramble some weeks to record, but we'll figure it out. And, and the, those of you who are listening, you can expect a new episode at least once every, every couple of weeks or so. And it's going to live up to its name, the inside scoop. You know, my goal here and the way I pitched it uh, tomorrow to you and your parents is to take fans inside what it's like to be a highly touted freshman playing his first season at a basketball crazy school like IU. I'm sure there's going to be ups, there's going to be downs, and we'll discuss it all and you know try out some different segments, get to know you and your family on a personal level, do some fan Q&A, and you know, some other fun stuff along the way that we want to try. Those are my objectives. What are your goals for this series? What do you hope that uh, that IU fans take away from this? Um, you know, I say just to, you know, really be able to get to know who I am, you know, as an actual person, you know, and realize that I am, you know, just another regular, you know, teenager, not a regular teenager. Obviously, I'm a student athlete, but, you know, I'm a human. I have feelings, you know, I'm I go through the same like human things that everybody does. That everybody else does every day. So, you know, just to you know give everybody a, a closer look at, you know, myself and the team and, you know, just any anything that they have ever been wondering about hopefully I can help clear that up absolutely I mean you know I think that's really the benefit of doing stuff like this it's so easy as fans you know you watch players on TV and you guys are kind of like just these two-dimensional figures that are just out there trying to win a basketball game and it is kind of easy sometimes to forget like you said that you guys are your people people with a lot of pressure on you especially at a school like IU to perform and uh, I think the more that we can have conversations like this allow people to get to know you I think that'll really help yeah As you may recall, Bob Knight famously said, all of us learn to write in the second grade. Most of us go on to do greater things. And Coach was right about some types of writing. But today, we're talking about copywriting, the kind of writing that drives sales and builds businesses. And as another famous IU figure, Mark Cuban, likes to point out, there is no sport as competitive as business, which means you need a killer copywriter on your side to find your edge, dominate the competition, and rack up wins. Clay Manley from Speakeasy Sales Copy is that guy. Clay's an IU alum, a diehard basketball fan, and an award-winning copywriter whose words have been trusted by Petco, Marvel, Slim Jim, and beyond. So if your business could benefit from more engagement, 
leads, and sales, then check out Clay's copywriting and coaching services at speakeasysalescopy.com. And if you want to learn how to whip up your own sales winning copy without breaking a sweat, Clay has a virtual copy coaching course that is tailor-made for you. As a listener of this show, you can sample Clay's proven playbook for sales winning strategies for free. Just go to speakeasysalescopy.com slash scoop to get your free copy of his Right to Sell Secrets guide. Just how winning cures all in basketball, sales cures all in business. If you want your business to have a banner year, great copy is the X factor. Go to speakeasysalescopy.com today. Okay. So for the rest of this first episode, let's get the inside scoop basically on what your IU basketball experience has been like so far. And I want to start here. You know, in a media session, your coach, Mike Woodson, uh, in the same one where he referred to you as light in the butt, he referred to you as cocky, and he meant that in a good way. Uh, I just did an interview with Rob Finnessy, and he mentioned how confident you are. I want to know what you think about when you hear comments like that from your coach, from kind of the elder statesman on your team. How does that make you feel? Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's a humbling statement, like just from both of them. And, you know, just to know, see it or feel that, you know, that they have that respect for me, you know, and me and Coach Wilson, our relationship is just, it's like that to where I know, like, like I, I know exactly, like, you know, what he's saying when he answering the questions like that. And, you know, that coming from, you know, my senior Rob, you know, it's just like, they 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 know exactly like what I'm doing every day in terms of you know just being in the gym you know working on my body making sure I'm taking care of my nutrition they just know that like I'm I'm putting the time in so you know with putting the time in and you know getting the reps in every single day you know that that removes a lot of doubt for me and instills a lot of confidence you know when I'm you know on the court or off you know but that's kind of just been my Personality, I, you could say just a guy, you know, I, I want to brighten up the room and, you know, try and, you know, uh, you know, make anybody's day better, especially my teammates, mm-hmm. you know, make them, you know, feel the love for me. And, you know, because, you know, we we call ourselves a family, you know, and we all try to um, bring that mentality every day. But, you know, just to, just to work, really, since I've stepped foot on campus, you know, that that's the reason why I would – say I like uh kind of like ooze confidence just because like I, I know that uh I really believe in the work. Like so you you get your confidence from the work and from the preparation that you put in. That's all it is. How does it manifest itself? You know, we're still getting to know you. You know, obviously we, you, know, you got to see a couple games in the Bahamas, but we haven't seen you play a ton. Like how does your confidence slash cockiness come out? Are you a trash talker? Like are you demonstrative? Or is it more of a of kind of a quiet confidence? Uh you, I I can say it's a mix of both. Cause it because yeah. it's like I I've learned to like tone it down in terms of the trash talking. Cause it, it's just like I I'll like go out there and I'm I'm gonna compete. That like that's what it's all about for me. Like I'm gonna compete. And you know, if if somebody chooses to trash talk to me, then now. Now I got a problem to solve with you, and you know I might trash talk a little bit back, uh, back and forth with them. But you know, I'm, I've become really big on like the mental part of the game and all that. So you know that, that's really why I've like toned it down a little bit, well, a lot. But you know, I guess you could say it's just like just the the way I move and you know the way I talk to my teammates. You know, the the motivation. You know, just something that you, you probably wouldn't see usually from a freshman, like coming in, you know, just somebody that's not afraid to talk and lead. So I guess you could see, say that like, that's what I, I bring to the court. What's that like as a freshman? I mean, coming in with some of the accolades that you do and just your natural disposition, which is, I think, as you just said, to kind of be confident, to be outspoken. But you come into an established team that has a hierarchy, that has seniors and guys who have been around how do you meld there like how do you try to pick your spots and ease your way in or do you or do you just say you know i'm tomorrow i'm gonna kind of play my game and be who i am right that and that's that was like one of the main things that coach wilson told me from jump he was just like if you come in and be yourself like and do what you always done which is you know work and you know play to your strengths like and don't don't try and switch it up 
that's something that I've really like taken really seriously. I'm just like, I'm just going to do what I've been doing like my whole life and what's been working. So, you know, from the, with the leadership of all my older teammates, which is something that I'm so fortunate to have, like with all these older guys who have been through the process, guys from different schools who have went through different systems and all that. So it's just like, just learning from them and, you know, always listening and the coaching staff is that, that speaks for itself. So I'm, it's a learning curve every single day, but, you know, you know, just, just, yeah, just being myself, you know, not, not trying to do too much and just trying to make all the right plays to win. Yeah. You know, you talk about the leadership of the existing guys, you know, guys like Rob and race and trace who have been around for a while, but all you guys are going through this for the first time with a new coaching staff, you know, so, uh, you know, to a certain extent, it's new for all of you, but is there like an example or a story you can point to of, you know, kind of leadership from those guys that's really helped you out? You know, maybe, you know, just something they, the, you know, piece of advice they gave you or, or you know, just some help that they provided you that's kind of helped you acclimate yourself to college basketball so far? Um, I would definitely say like, because before I got here and like last year, at IMG, like the, the, um, like the training schedules are pretty similar but college basketball is a different uh, level. So, you know, just being around them and, you know, them, like when I first got here, just reminded me to, you know, take care of my body, you know, go in and get treatment as much as possible, you know, just so I can be at my best, you know, every time we go out there and practice and then eventually when we got to play, but, you know, just taking care of my body, that that's, that's something that I've taken really seriously. Um, and, some of the, you know, the older guys have, you know, made sure that I was doing and And it was like, it wasn't really hard for me to, you know, to up the level of how, how, how I was uh, taking care of my body. But, you know, just because I, that was something that I already wanted to do, but just them showing me and then talking me through it and, you know, like telling me what they've been doing and what's been working for them. You know, that, that's something that I could, that, that comes to mind immediately. And then, you know, just when we're playing like in live play, like just giving me little nuggets and like just the stuff that they like situations that they've seen tons of time on the floor, you know, just continuing to, you know, teach me. Cause I, I feel like you can learn a lot more from a player who's like been playing at this level than, you know, than you can a coach, like just because like they've, you do it, but it's, it's definitely different with our coaching staff because almost everyone played too, but it's just like, these yeah. are the guys that I'm playing with. So, you know, just listening and learning from them has been really good. You know, you obviously weren't here at Indiana the last few years, but I think from a fan perspective, it didn't always seem like a lot of fun was being had yeah. by the team. You know, and I don't know what kind of sense you've gotten just from talking to guys, you know, kind of what it was like before, but it's been kind of a theme of the off season is having fun and kind of the environment's different and things have changed under, you know, with the new staff. What kind of sense have you gotten for how different things are now than maybe they were the last couple of years? Well, being a freshman, like being with, like, I'm like the first, like, wave of of players like that that are playing for Coach Woodson. Like, this is all I know. Like, like just like good, like great vibes every day. You know, Coach Woodson is a one of the most positive guys I've ever met. So, you know. And, and like they'll like talk about like how it's been like in the past and like just like everybody was kind of like looking over their shoulder or you know just didn't feel as comfortable as they have in the past but you know it coach Wilson and and him bringing his staff and it was kind of like a like a deep breath like it was like like, like we can you know be be ourselves and you know we can have fun with it but then at the same time whenever when we step on the court it's time to get better it's time to work so just, you know, having that that fine line in between having fun, enjoying ourselves, enjoying the moment and, you know, handling our business. We've we've done uh, a really good job with that. And Coach Wilson's led that. And, you know, we just follow his lead at this point. Yeah. You know, and you guys had the great opportunity to go to the Bahamas, which allowed you to, to practice more and then to kind of just go on that trip and be together and have that shared experience. What were your biggest takeaways from that trip? Um, I said the first thing is that like we're like I I I thought we were gonna have a really good team like when I first got here and just saw all the guys, but when we actually like got in the like a uh, got in like actually playing someone else other than ourselves, it was I, and I'm like 
I'm looking at the team and I'm like, I'm looking at the bench. I'm like, we, like, we're deep. Like, we can go really deep into the bench and like, and like, like, you got a good starting group and you got guys coming off the bench who can start. So it's like, I'm like, wow, like, we, like, like we, like we got a good team. Like, we got a lot of guards. Like, we, we just have somebody good at every position. Like, we have what it takes to, you know, do what we want to do at a high level at every position. And then, you know, just, I mean, just seeing because it was the first time the coaches were like coaching together and they like they, they handled that really well. You know, and I felt like it was just it was really good for the team, like for us to, you know, get out of the country, and, you know, enjoy each other, learn some more about each other. And I feel like that was really good for us going into the season because it gave us some film to watch and, you know, just see how we look against somebody else other than ourselves, because I, I don't know if there was any other college basketball teams who were able to actually play someone else in the summertime. Yeah. You know, now I'm sure you came in with some preconceived notions of certain players, you know, like I'm sure you'd seen Trace Jackson Davis and here's an all American level guy. And I'm sure you thought he would be good, but some of the other guys I'm assuming you might not have known a lot about. Is there anybody who's really surprised you where you're like, dang, that guy's better than I thought he was of your teammates. Um, I mean, everybody has like they, they like went past like what I imagine you know them to be. Yeah, but, uh, I would say the guy that surprised me the most. I, I would say Rob. Really? The Rob or yeah, the Rob like from a guard standpoint, because like I, I had seen. X a little bit like just from watching Pitt like when like just watching basketball and like I because I, I didn't watch too many like Indiana games but like I I knew I knew Christian because he was in my class before he classed up and then yeah like, I knew of Trey and Anthony and like some of the other guards and like some of our bigger players but I would say Rob just, like, I didn't really because I, I didn't really know him, like before I came like, and when I got here and, like we playing in the open runs. Like even my dad like was saying something to me. He was like, "Rob is he, he's good, like like he like he's a really good guard, like it's somebody that I've learned a lot from. Like we work out a lot together. Really, and that's kind of like my like big brother type deal. Like and I I hang I hang out with a lot of the older guys because I know that they have a lot of knowledge just to give me. So, um, but Rob is somebody that definitely surprised me, and I'm fortunate to be able to play with him. That's excellent. That's going to be music to a lot of IU fans ears. You know, he's obviously been here for three years and kind of had some ups and downs. Um, yeah, but I think everybody's really, really hopeful that he's going to have a big senior year. So that's good to hear. Yeah, he's in a good he's in a really good space mentally right now. You know, again, like taking care of his body piece. He's been doing a great job with that. And then, you know, I'm, I've just been tagging along with him. But, you know, just the work that we've been putting in our mind, our body, our spiritual. I mean, he, he just in a really good place right now. So I, I, yeah. I'm expecting a big year out of him as well. That's great. But Cliff Marshall is going to love listening to this podcast if he does with all the talk about taking care of your body. His lessons are clearly sinking in. <laughs> what's it What's it like with Cliff? I mean, I'm sure, you know, you probably when you're out eating meals at the Bahamas, you get some side eye from him if you have too many carbs on your plate, that kind of thing. But he uh, he really seems to instill that in guys, the importance of what you eat and how, you know, how important it is to not just lift weights and run and do all that stuff, but also just what you put into your body is important, too. Yeah, Coach Cliff's a great guy. Like, he he brings great energy every day. Like, somebody that I just – I can just go in his office and we can have a conversation, of, like, that's not about anything related to sports, you know. I can just yeah. go sit down and, you know, talk to him man to man as I can do with everyone else on the coaching staff. But, you know, Coach, you know, we, we spend a lot of uh, – like we probably spend the most time with him. Actually, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's – I guess strength coach usually who we spend the most time with. And he's done a great job with us. You know, we go to church with him, you know, but as you said, like how much he preaches taking care of our bodies and putting the right foods in us. And well, for me, like I've been, I, I need to gain weight. So he, he's not looking at my place and I got too many cars. <laughs> I guess that's true. <laughs> you, you, you get some more. You know, you know. That's true. That's a good spot to be in. <laughs> he's a great guy. Like he's, he's been here for a while as well. So. You know, he, he knows a lot and he's a like he, he's like a, he's really good at what he does.
The Inside Scoop is also supported by Future Freedom, an online education library that will give you the latest thinking on how to build an exceptional business and lifestyle by embracing change instead of dreading it. As you may have noticed, the future is coming at us faster than ever. That means accelerated change and disruption. It's easy to understand why that makes many people fearful. But as a source of opportunity, nothing beats change. With artificial intelligence and other emerging technologies threatening both the quality and quantity of traditional jobs, you need to think about how to make technology work for you instead of you working for it. At Future Freedom, my business partner, serial digital entrepreneur Brian Clark, the founder of Copyblogger, Unemployable, and Further, introduces you to our personal enterprise approach to succeeding in the emerging creator economy with his brand new free course. These five free lessons will empower you to create your ideal future on your terms, why it's time to think differently about your career, how a personal enterprise builds progressive wealth, the art of anticipatory thinking, how to build the base of your personal enterprise, and finally, how to unretire and travel the world. To get started with this free course today, go to assemblycall.com slash FF. That's assemblycall.com slash FF. That link will redirect you to Future Freedom where you can sign up in one step. Full disclosure, I am part owner of Future Freedom. So if you wanna see what I'm up to when I'm not obsessing over IU basketball, Here's your chance. Once again, it's assemblycall.com slash FF. Well, I tell you, you know, if you're trying to gain weight, Bloomington is a great city to live in because there are some amazing food options in Bloomington. Yep. So, I'm, you know, I'm curious how your transition to Bloomington has been and if you found any favorite spots yet in your, uh, your ventures out in the city. The restaurant that I've been to the most is Malibu. Like I, I like yeah. I that would bring me out on the visits, like with the recruits, and that's definitely a place they go every time. But like I, I've been there, like I found some little spots. I don't know, but Malibu is definitely my favorite right now. That's my favorite little restaurant. Yeah, and you're living in Evolve, right? All the freshmen live there. What are the uh, what are the accommodations like? Are they as good as as they've been uh, as they've been promoted? Yeah, I, I don't really use like everything else that's like downstairs, like the the gym and the the pool, the weight room, just because we have everything over at Cook Hall. But yeah, the, it, and you and nice place to live though. And you and Logan are rooming together. I'm actually with uh, Miller and Mike now. I oh, you are okay. Gotcha. So you know, it's interesting. I, I told you I, was, I did an interview with Rob, and you know, I asked him you know, kind of something that he had learned that surprised him. And one of the things he said, you know, when he was a freshman, the, the freshman didn't live at Evolve. He lived in the dorms for the first year. Mm -hmm. And he says, looking back on it, he really appreciates that first year, you know, living in the dorms, even though the accommodations weren't as nice, you know, just kind of getting to meet some of the other students, you know, maybe outside of the, the cocoon of being an athlete a little bit. If you were given the choice, would you uh, would you trade your current comforts at Evolve to go live in the dorms? Or are you happy with where you're at? <laughs> I, I think I'm good where I'm at, just because, <laughs> like, I and I I definitely like agree with like you know just being. He was over at Briscoe, right? Yeah, yeah, he was in Briscoe. Like being over there, just like around all the other freshmen, you know, I would definitely like meet a lot more people. But I was in a dorm last year. Mm, and that's I, true. So like I'm like yeah I got enough of that so when I saw this I was like yeah this is nice it's a nice little space for me my own bathroom yeah yeah I, I appreciate this as well but I mean I'm sure Briscoe would have been a uh, good experience for me did that help you the year at IMG transitioning do you think it's a little bit easier for you coming to Bloomington having already been away from home for a year right and that was a goal like that, that was like the number one thing just to go down there to be best prepared for my freshman year and you know everyone there that i was around you know did yeah. the job and you know prepare me i feel for college and i'm glad i made me and my family made that decision yeah 
Well, you know, right now is kind of the calm before the storm. You know, practice hasn't started yet, uh, but Hoosier Hysteria is coming Saturday, October 2nd. It'll be here, your debut at Simon Scott Assembly Hall in front of Indiana fans. Do you know what you're going to be doing yet at Hoosier Hysteria? Are you part of the dunk contest or the skills competition or any of those things? I'll be in the three-point contest. But in the three-point contest, okay. Yeah, but the dunk contest and the skills competition, they got that, you know. Do you know who you're going up against in the three-point contest? It's uh, Miller, P. Stu. I'm, I'm pretty sure Anthony is in it, too, and then me. All right. Any predictions for who's going to win the three-point contest? I mean, it's only right that I say me, but <laughs> I know everybody's going to shoot the ball really well. Ant, Ant's been shooting it, shooting the hell out the ball. So, Yeah. Well, that's going to be fun for IU fans because shooting has obviously not been a strength of this program for the last few years. But a lot of the optimism for this season is because you and Parker and Miller, you know, and even Anthony didn't get a ton of, of run last year. But the fact that you guys will be playing more should certainly improve the outside shooting. So it'll be fun seeing you guys put that on display. What uh, and you and your family are going to be there right outside beforehand uh, you got. And for those of you who are watching on the video, you got your scoop sweatshirt on right now. Um, is that going to be an opportunity for people to to pick up some hoodies, some shirts? And are, are you going to be out there too, or is it just your family? I think it, because I, I don't know where I'll be or like what the, like what the setup would be, but I, I know my family would be out there, my, my parents and my sisters. Uh, I'm okay. sure they'll be selling the other t-shirts. They might, they might have a few of these, but I know they'll have more of the, like the actual shirts, like with the little, like the real picture of me on there. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, all, all of you who are going to Hoosier Hysteria, definitely look out for that. What do you, what do you think it's going to be like to hear your name called and, you know, hear thousands of fans at Assembly Hall go nuts? It's going to be special. Cause I mean, I spend, we all spend a lot of time in there and it's just been empty. And, you yeah. know, we're, we're practicing or I'm working out in there. I, I just, I look like around the whole arena and try and like, imagine like what did it look like what did it sound like but i know my imagination isn't it doesn't justify it enough so i don't know I, it's definitely gonna be a really good experience we, we gonna have a lot of fun with it but i'm excited to you know get all the fans back in there hear my name called over the intercom and you know just go out there and have some fun what do you what do you feel, if anything, when you walk on the court at Assembly Hall? You know, to fans, obviously, you know, we look up and we see the five banners and those are all really special to us. But obviously, Indiana hasn't hung one since 1987. And a lot of people are like, recruits these days, they don't care about that. That doesn't mean anything. What about you? You know, a freshman who's coming to Indiana, like, what does that mean to you to look up and see those banners and kind of know the history? Does that mean anything or is it too ancient at this point to really be meaningful? No, I mean, a lot. Just know that, you know, I'm playing at the same gym that, you know, Coach Bobby Knight was in. Again, he was the center of basketball for a long time. You know, and the fact that Coach Woodson played for him, there's no way we can, like, not care about it because, you know, he he talks about it and he lives he lived it. So it's like he he's trying to – he's instilling that same passion into us. And, you know, you know, coming in, I'm just like, Indiana has had some really, really good players – really good coaches so now i'm just trying to you know build upon that legacy that was already here before i even stepped foot on campus yeah all right so last question for you what are your goals for this season and you know personal team goals and do you are you a goal setting guy like do you write out specific goals that you want to accomplish before seasons begin i do um and i, I would say i'm a a goal hunter like I, I'm, I'm gonna go get it like I'm just gonna set it like I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get it. I'm gonna go snatch that. But I mean, we we want to win, and we want to win at a high level. You know, we we want to win the Big Ten. Like we we want to win the Big Ten tournament, and we want to go get a national championship. Like we, it, this isn't like a. The way we we've been looking at it, it's like, this isn't like, uh, we'll wait two three years. Like in Coach Wilson says that all the time like next year the year after that it's not promised to them so you know we want to do what we what we can and what we want to do this year like we want to you know get straight to it you know, and obviously you know i want to win a freshman of the year make an all-conference team you know but the team goes you know winning 
you know, that, that kind of like settles, solves everything. You know, basketball is more, any sport is more fun when you win it. Mm-hmm. You know? So, you know, that, that that's the goal just to win and, you know, do it at a high level, you know, do it together and do it the right way. You ready for practice? You ready for practice to start? Yeah. yeah. Like we've already been in there, like, but it's not having been like the full time. But yeah. we've had some of those two and a half, three hour practices. Like we had some before the Bahamas. So I'm ready for those to get uh, back started up again. And, you know, we get going in the season. All right, man. Well, hey, I'm excited for this series. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, we'll, uh, We'll put some good some good episodes together for folks, give them some insight, and just kind of share your journey as we go through this freshman season. So I'm really looking forward to it. Me as well. All right. Well, good luck at Hoosier Hysteria. Have fun. We'll be cheering for you at the three-point contest. Really, we'll be cheering for everybody. We just want to see shots go down. All, all shots. Let's see them all go down. <laughs> but have fun, man, and uh, we'll connect soon for episode number two. All right. Cool. Thanks, Tamar. Yep. Okay, well, that was episode one of the Inside Scoop with Tamar Bates, presented by Speakeasy Sales Copy. Remember to go to speakeasysalescopy.com to check out the copywriting and copy coaching services that can help your business drive sales and dominate the competition. That's speakeasysalescopy.com. And hey, if this is your first time listening to The Assembly Call, be sure to check out our other IU basketball content, too. We host a live show talking IU hoops every Thursday night. And we host a live post-game show immediately following every IU basketball game. Check it out at assemblycall.com. My thanks to Tamar Bates for his time and insight, and to Bob Thompson for creating our theme music. And of course, thank you for listening. We'll be back soon with another edition of the Inside Scoop. Until then, keep your elbows in and your eyes on the rim, and go Hoosiers. Hoosiers.